Happy Halloween. This is the Produce Reporter Weekend Review. Greg, what's up in Kansas City? Obviously not another World Series for the Royals, unfortunately. No, I'm still living in 2015 here, but it did snow, so we have that. <laughs> Feels like it's snowing here in Texas. <laughs> well, it'll be, uh, it'll be fully into November by the time our viewers see this, but we still had a big week at the Produce Reporter. We had a lot of reflection from PMA Fresh Summit. You know, it's such a big event that if you just go and then drop it, you really miss a lot of the value. I think a lot of the value is in reflecting on what you've learned because there's too much to process at the time. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that in this video. And I know you have some good insights on some new retail trends. Yeah, for sure. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm dressed like a clown. Oh, I didn't notice. <laughs> you just, you know, really... you on your wall, that skeleton back there. <laughs> I am like, I'm all Halloweened up right now. Um, this one's actually fake. The real ones are out on the porch. Anyway. The girls um, haven't gotten them yet? Yeah, right. No, they haven't, actually. I'm really surprised. They're too busy eating the pecans off my tree in the yard. Um, I, I really considered wearing my banana costume, however, because uh, there was a really fantastic and interesting uh, quarterly report from Del Monte this week. Um, their their CEO said uh, they're actually kind of kind of snuck it in there that they're going to open their first retail outlet here in the U.S. in Coral Gables in the first quarter of 2020. And this is a concept that they launched um, in the Middle East in 2015. Uh, the first store opened in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what they are is not really necessarily a retail store. It's more like a like a food stall almost at like an airport. There's one in the Kuwait airport apparently um, where they sell a lot of grab and go stuff. And I'm sure uh, that's going to be a really interesting concept. It was introduced to the U S market. They said, Hey, we're going to build one back in 2017. And then we didn't hear anything for a couple of years. Um, since then they have acquired man packing and I really feel like man packing's innovation and products on the grab and go sphere are going to bolster their uh, assortment. For, for that concept. So we'll see if they actually spread it around the US, but it's something that is a fresh produce forward concept. So a lot of consumers are looking for that out of their grab and go food. Yeah, snacking is a huge opportunity for the produce industry. We keep hearing more and more about the, that meal segment and produce is a natural, a lot of that. Another natural whole food in snacking is bananas. And Mr. Yeah. Abigazala dropped a little info on uh, what we see in the banana market. And it didn't have to deal with any diseases in Central America, did it? No, and he mentions that one of the analysts, I think, asked about um, their concerns. And, of course, uh, the banana world is concerned about TR4. Um, it's also called banana, uh, Panama disease, but is that, it's, it's TR4. Um, but he wasn't as concerned about that as he was... Um, calling out, basically calling out the buyer market on their, it's something that we've talked about before that I've been talking about for years is that bananas are too cheap and we are artificially uh, keeping the prices too low below a sustainable market. And uh, he actually said, uh, you're either going to kill the goose or, or you're going to kill us on this. And it's, I thought that was fascinating for someone to come out and finally say something like that in a public forum especially one of the CEOs of one of the largest banana companies out there. Um, it, also, interestingly enough, uh, banana sales in North America for Del Monte were down this quarter, uh, but they were offset by higher sales in, I believe, the Middle East and Asia. Right, and they did um, much better in some of the other product categories, such as avocados and fresh cut. Yes, of course. I also caught another uh, quarterly report from Sprouts Farmers Market. Uh, Jack Sinclair, their new CEO, has been on the job for 100 days now. He's been looking around at stores, and he's decided Sprouts stores are getting too big. And uh, going forward, they're going to slow their growth a bit and uh, put in a smaller footprint and really focus on uh, what makes them uh, better, I guess, and then also closer to distribution centers, because I guess they've gotten a little too far spread out, uh, too big, and uh, too many stores, I guess, too many new ones going in. So that'll be interesting from them. And it's something that I've heard rumors, and they're totally unsubstantiated, other than just people talking at trade shows, like at Fresh Summit, 
uh, that sprouts could be up for sale. So talking about smaller footprints and slowing growth, also spending less money, that all points to maybe there's some truth to that. Yeah, that's kind of the thing you do before you would sell it, not add extra cost. It's possible. So we'll keep, keep an eye on them. They're definitely a retailer to watch. They just opened their 300th store last year. Um, and, you know, too, if you watch it, the retail news, uh, Wegmans just opened its 100th and 101st store and the first one to go into New York City and people lined up around the block in the rain to go to Wegmans. Uh, they're very excited. It'll be, I, I want to go to the one that's in New York just to see how different it is than what, the ones that are upstate and elsewhere in the country. Um, but to see that uh, open up and people just stand around and wait in the rain to go into Wegmans really cracks me up. So, you know. <laughs> what people will do. Right, yeah. So let's talk about Fresh Summit. We're still chewing on it. A lot to digest from Fresh Summit. And I said this earlier when we were chatting about, you know, what we we're going to talk about today. Um, we're still writing about Fresh Summit. We still have content coming out of Fresh Summit. And, and in trade media for a long time, you know, we, we, a whole lot of build up to all the things you're going to see. I, I think we want to focus on all the things that we got out of it, um, out of Fresh Summit. And um, some of the things that I saw, obviously, I'm, I'm big on fun and excitement and experience and games. Um, so that's what I wrote about initially. You wrote about the taste experiences. So what are your, your key takeaways from Fresh Summit? Well, I thought it was, you know, we, we, um, we covered at the show, you know, how it was a little bit more of a consumer experience than it has been in previous years. And I think part of that was all the samples. And I just kind of went around and, and made a note of, of a few products that are really separating themselves from the competition and when it comes to flavor. And one of them was this melon, a dino melon. I, I ran upon one of my pieces of literature that I got. Um, but it was an amazing tasting melon and it looked cool. And you just don't see the stuff like that in the market. Another one, you know, we, we kind of joked about how uh, Cosmic Crisp Apple has been uh, the subject of this huge media blitz. And we're, we're still a month away from it being actually available in the market. But there were other proprietary apples out there at the show that you could taste and a lot of them were amazing and it's really you know cosmic crisp is is going to come into a market full of good products now they might still succeed you know we always hope these these new apples catch on with consumers but i i talked to one um a company out of oregon who had a, a dragon well the company is dragon berry and it was a, a dragon apple green and dragon apple wasn't it? green yeah that's right and it was uh, you know, it looked kind of like a Golden Delicious or, or you know, kind of on the edge between Golden Delicious and Granny Smith. But it was very sweet inside. It's an unexpected experience. And it was just, it was those kinds of experiences that I thought were really cool. And companies are having to differentiate, differentiate themselves based on flavor. And that's a good thing for consumers and raising consumption. Well, I had, a, I had a really great meeting with the folks behind Envy Apple over at the Oppenheimer Group's booth. And what Envy Apple is doing, and, and obviously Envy has been around for a long time. I can remember when they launched Envy um, almost a decade ago, or was it even more than a decade ago? Um, but it is well established in the market, but they've decided to target their advertising this year and their promotions and their, um, their, their marketing efforts with very focused programs with retailers to reinforce that NV, um, you know, outperforms almost every other Apple according to their uh, independent research when we talk about taste and flavor and appearance. So this well-established Apple that, it, that has put itself out there for uh, over a decade now or, or close to a decade at least, um, they're even uh, stepping up their marketing game but actually going more on the trade side of it um, instead of the consumer side of it. They still will be, of course, doing consumer promotions. Um, last year, they had the Envy Roadshow where they went sampling events across the country. Um, and I'm sure that they're going to be doing some marketing and sampling like that, but their efforts are going to be more into targeted with retailers. So um, it, it's the Apple had a category. I've heard it uh, said this way. that It's kind of a bloodbath right now on what kind of space you're going to get, uh, especially with the marketing dollars and promotions that are coming in with a lot of these bigger apples. Envy Apples uh, spends quite a bit of money with retailers 
um, on promotions, but Cosmic Crisp is, has, you know, really come in with uh, big, big, deep pockets as well. So it's going to be really interesting going into the next couple of months. And I think I'm going to have to have another focus group to, uh, apple tasting party to talk about some of these newer apples that uh, haven't talked about before. Yeah, that went really well. All right. What else are we going to talk about? I got to go get my kids dressed like this, you know? <laughs> got to embarrass them at every moment possible. While they're yeah, still I'm afraid I'm not as embarrassing as I could be today. <laughs> I know. Come on. You could get a dinosaur costume. I think I saw mac and cheese. Come on, man. Oh. Uh, that was a dirty little secret. That's my daughter's Halloween costume. <laughs> Oh, you're trying to win the company one uh, remotely uh, by dressing up in your daughter's costume, but it's really great. Tell her it's a good job because my yeah. kid, um, it's so cold here in Austin, Texas, it's actually going to freeze tonight, um, that my younger one is going to be a lobster because it's actually got like attached mittens and like a full body like padded suit. And my big kid's going to have to change his uh, Visco Girl costume to leggings instead of tiny shorts. Um, and the people outside of the uh, parents of teenagers probably won't understand <laughs> what that is. <laughs> but we like to have fun. So. Well, having teenage daughters, I can tell you, authentic Visco girls do change to leggings when it gets cold. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the Week in Review from the Produce Reporter newsletter. I hope you had fun with us, and we will see you again next week. <laughs> Bye, Craig. <laughs>